this is I Shalom Rastafari Scenes. Greetings and welcome, friends. So, today, also within the course of a reasoning with our good brother, we were actually able to figure it all out, once and for all, pertaining to everything having to do with our origins, as described in Genesis, the Kebron Agast, and how to actually win the battle against the enemy. And... Uh, we got to quickly just establish our position. So, you know, we're trotting right now. And, you know, this is technically the Garden of the Brotherhood. It's Jaws Earth. So just to make this clear for a second, you know, we're on Jaws Earth. Right? The Earth is the Lord's and the fullness of the world made it dwell therein. That is technically the same earth plane as even when the Garden of Eden was just created 7,516 years ago approximately. Oh, so, so the reason why I'm pointing that out is because though the, the general course of events and what is recorded in the Holy Bible from chapters uh, 1 to 3 especially, you know, where the Garden of Eden is the place where we're at, and then the disobedience of Adam happens, the goddamn devil, goddamn him, and all that. Even though that's about a little less than 7,516 years ago, and that happened about, you know, up in somewhere near Lake Tana in Ethiopia, in, 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 in the place where the Garden of Eden literally was, even though that seems so far away and so long ago, even today now though, 7,516 years, a little less than later, the scenario in the general setting, the working environment, the divine mission and commission is generally almost the same except for the fact that now through the second Adam being uh, Adonai Yeshua HaMashiach our boss he will save the anointed or the kosher Messiah even from the cannabis of Mashiach from the cannabis Messiah the, the Messiah right uh, he will save the anointed right Jesus Christos uh yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, correct. Uh, we have this totally perfect state now where through the second Adam, it's like we're perfected, perfected now. And we're really good to go. So that, that being said now, the battlefield scenario is the same though. And the battlefield scenario is... We are God in the flesh, in the Garden of Eden. We're supposed to flourish, be fruitful and multiply, flourish, you know, tend to the garden. Um, um, keep, the, keep our fatherland holy, etc. Um, and there is this little enemy activity. There's this little problem, though. And how do we see this realistically? Even today, anywhere you go in the world, not of it, look around you. The world is in chaos. I'm talking about the outside, physical, real world. Because remember, like I was when I was filming on the intro, I was walking across a footpath. There's meadows around me. There's uh, nature, forests, waterfalls, mountains, lakes, snow-capped mountains. You know, it's it's the same earth. It's the same playing field it's it's yeah working environment that even then was the garden of eden and the garden of eden is a metaphysical and a physical place so in the metaphysical garden of eden the inner promised land in the cannabisum matrix in a good kosher cannabis high you will see that too yet this outer is actually 
so the outer world, the garden of the brotherhood, because that's part of the infinite garden. You know, I was walking through it the other day, uh, just earlier, and I'm sitting, now I'm in a building, right? But that building is built on ground. There's concrete, but the ground is still the same earth that's also the same earth that, you know, makes up the, the garden and the garden of Eden and the garden of the brotherhood, the, the entire world in a general sense, so now the, the task is actually to destroy the enemy who is causing problems in the Garden of Eden. The, did you know that the mission of Adam is like God became Adam. Actually, Adam is God made manifest on a mission to destroy the enemy and to tend to the garden and like work the garden and... and, and we're also created for his praises. The purpose of life is to hallelujah and to be happy, of course. So there's, a, there's this mission that we have as humanity that's, that's recorded, that's known from ancient times that very few apparently even remember and know about. Like, what is our mission? Did you know that we were created in the image of God and after his own likeness? That we are literally the manifestation of God in the flesh? And that there's a divine mission to destroy the enemy, to actually remove Satan because of his pride. And for us as uh, humanity or Adamic humans to flourish. Okay, now that I've talked about that, we should talk in, about something that's happening right now that's actually extremely relevant as to what exactly is this devil or this Satan that's causing problems in the Garden of Eden, in other words, on our earth plane, in this world, what is this enemy activity that's causing problems? And how is the satanic agenda that we see from the Kebron Agest and the, in Genesis, how is that now in a modern form of expression within these, this sort of an alien agenda that is coming to light in the most normal and mainstream so-called of media channels, like with the UFO whistleblowers coming out and, and reporting things. Okay, so um, number one, the, uh, the enemy is actually already annihilated and destroyed through the great work performed by our boss. Yeshua HaMashiach, he will save the anointed. Purification and anointing. Anointing having to do with the Messiah oil, the holy anointing oil, and the holy incense mixture in the holy temple of Jerusalem being comprised of different spices, including one particular ingredient, a kosher plant called kanaman basam. These things are as simple as follows. It's as if you receive the Messiah, you are saved through the anointing because of the Kahneman Bussum ingredient in the holy anointing oil and in the Ketoret, in the uh, incense, or in the Shemen HaMashicho, the Messiahing oil. So that's actually how it works. So the kosher Messiah comes from the kosher Kahneman Bussum. That's actually what it is. The Merkaba, or what's called the chariot for the Mashiach, is actually in the kosher Kahneman Basim. It's that simple. And it's fact. We also know that the goddamn enemy has no power whatsoever. It says in the Kebron Agest that the enemy, or Satan, curse be he, hellfire, burn him for eternity, um has no power whatsoever except to cause a bad idea to flourish. That's all. This is what they call bad mind. Fire burn bad mind. I have good mind right now, I'm just saying. Um, so knowing that, you see how the enemy is totally failed? The enemy, the devil, Satan, curse be he, cannot do anything whatsoever, nothing, has no operational capability, cannot push, 
cannot seize nothing. The only thing that the devil can do is cause a bad thought. That's all. That's all that, that's it. So now with discipline of the mind, right? Discipline of the mind is a basic ingredient of genuine morality and therefore spiritual strength. In order to achieve this great aim, man must be guided by Ritua Hymenote, living faith. An excerpt from his Imperial Majesty's speech on religion. With discipline of the mind and a good medi in our sword, even perhaps like our Aki had said, today, um, I and I, ooh, what was it? Something along the lines of um, I and I with I and I flaming swords burning each and every way. Guarding the path or the way of or to the tree of life. Because, you know, when uh, Adam and Eve and Co. were uh, expelled from the Garden of Eden, and then there was this flaming sword guarding the tree of life, well, that's actually also the word of God, but it's also the cherubim, a type of angels. Yet, in this instance, the sword, like... If I'm Adam in the Garden of Eden, God incarnate, and I have to slay this goddamn dragon that is running around and causing problems, that God became incarnated to kill, to destroy, uh, to remove Satan because of his pride. So then it's like a knight. It's like you have Adam is like a knight who is God in the Garden of Eden with this sword now, just, this, is, this is now, though. This is real time right now. This is how it looks right now. Right now, we're in the Garden of Eden, both the physical. So wait, the physical would have to be in East Africa, but in the state of mind. The Garden of Eden state of mind, right? We have to protect it and destroy this enemy. So we're like, we're in this Garden of Eden, uh, of the Brotherhood, the world, right? Not of it. And we're using that sword, the two-edged, sharpest two-edged sword, the word of God. It's also like a flaming sword, though, um, that protects the tree of life. Be, 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 wait a second. Uh, the tree of life is a kosher kanam and basam, and also the Eitz Chaim, but also Adonai Yeshua HaMashiach, our boss, he will save the anointed. It's also... Um, so the flaming sword protecting the tree of life, though, is like, uh, that's, a, that's a different thing than what I'm describing now. And, but we have this sort of a sword of the word of God and also like a flaming sword somehow because of its being like, I wonder how we came up with that. Because the brotherhood come up with this. Um, that it was a flaming sword, whereas we, yeah, well, the sword is the word of God, but using the word of God to reprogram our hearts and minds so that we have the right meditation, having the right meditation, then having good mind, a good medi 24-7, there's no room for bad mind. So then it's like the devil has been destroyed because there's nothing, he's, he, he can't do, he's not doing anything, he's not working at all because all he can do is cause a bad thought to flourish. So therefore, if you have good mind and a good medi 24-7, you know, thank and praise Jah, um, ask and receive, right? Read Psalms, uh, Jah Iri, Jah will provide. You know, you're doing this all the time. You're reprogramming your heart and mind. You have a good medi. It's like everything is good. There is no enemy activity and the enemy is, is doesn't even exist. You can't do anything. But the, but the problem is that... <laughs> As soon as you step out into the world and not of it, if you look at the world today, there's even people that dress up like the devil. There's even, you know, there's a bunch of different stuff going on. The uh, satanic agenda, the alien agenda, the um, deceptive agenda of the enemy. You know, it's all over in the world. You can see it all over the place if you have knowledge and wisdom. Yet, how do we destroy that? Because now it's like... Technically, 
though there's the metaphysical Garden of Eden and the physical Garden of Eden, the world actually, like if I walk outside right now, it's technically also, you know, it's another area of the garden. And there's stuff going on there and there's an enemy operating there too that has to be destroyed. But how do you do that? Well, mostly with the word of God. Because if I speak the word of God out there to somebody who's demonically deceived, you know, or been tricked by an enemy unit, a demon or the, or the devil or something, and I speak something at the right time that's right, they're going to hear it and, and it's going to, the sower soweth the word and hope, right? It's going to bear fruit in them. Um, but the, the problem is, there isn't really a problem. It's a mindset. You have to have this mindset where you're ordering and your thoughts are right and you have enough discipline of the mind so that, because really, the goddamn enemy, you know, actually, the enemy, it's the enemy from within. In other words, it's it's your thoughts, because angels are thoughts, in, also in Hebrew. So discipline of the mind is like the tool, along with the word of God, to speak it, hear it, and faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the words of God, reprogramming your heart and mind and maintaining a good medi 24-7 that allows us to actually destroy the enemy. But now that's on a personal level. That's like within our heart and mind. That's like on a personal level. Some other person may have to first learn this or, or actually do this themselves to be able to experience that victory. Yet if we can do it, we can also see to it and tend to the garden and and because the garden is big, you know, it's big. Like it's the it's the whole world. Every piece of landscape is God's earth, and it's all. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of humanoids, um, humans running around, doing different things. The question is what, and what is it amounting to, and is it really working? You know, now they have nuclear warheads since the '40s or whatever. You know, that's a big problem. Is that really going to work out in the long run? Is that going to produce, you know, world peace? Are you going to see world peace come from the UN, how they're working right now? You think that's, you know, you see the news every day, what's going on? There's something going on. There's an enemy out there. There's a goddamn enemy that has to be destroyed. But how do you destroy the enemy? The problem is that most folks can't even identify what the enemy is. They even think that it's others who are also humans. It's like humanity is fighting against each other. Now, we know there's the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent within the human race. You have Abel and Cain. Cain went to, to the goddamn Anunnaki, man. And, well, man of God, do you know that Adam and Eve's first son, uh, second, uh, one, of the, one of their first sons, one of their two first sons, one of them went to a city called Nod. This is right in the Garden of Eden. They just got in the Garden of Eden, right? Where the hell did that city come from? And who the hell was living there? It's the goddamn Anunnaki. Cain went to the goddamn Anunnaki and Nod. It's in the Torah, man, and woman of God. It's in Torah portion Noah coming up like in three Shabuas now. In three weeks, fire burn in a week. Be high strong. Uh, so there's those two different lines, but the majority of humanity is fighting against each other because of the enemy activity that is manipulating them to fight against each other, but the, most folks don't even know who the goddamn enemy really is. We know who the goddamn enemy is. It's the devil. But it's, it's hard to understand. What you have to actually know is what exactly and who exactly the enemy is, and then how the enemy operates and what the enemy is ultimately capable of or rather incapable of, so that you know the operational capacity of the enemy, so you can destroy the enemy based on like, okay, this enemy unit has this type of weapon and can do this, so we would have to deploy this weapon to blow the hell out of them and eliminate them. Well, it's discipline of the mind. But, the, but where it becomes even more interesting is the fact that most people actually are seeing a so-called um, unexplained sort of a strange thing happening nowadays where 
a lot of the UFO ET alien abduction f- stuff, fire burn it, hellfire blaze, you know, the, the whistleblowers in the media testifying before Congress, there's something coming to light. There's something that's going on that cannot be denied and that is actually like a, a serious matter to uh, inspect with wisdom and prudence because you have these people like David Grush testifying before Congress talking about uh, all these different, you know, crash retrievals and UFOs being retrieved and where the hell did they come from? They weren't built. They weren't made in the USA. That's for sure. And and, and, and it goes on. And then there's more that comes to light. And now when people start actually taking real legal action, like the one named Dr. Stephen Greer talking about um, how they're taking legal action to, uh, 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 um, to like prosecute these different companies that are uh, involved in some kind of illegal uh, activity that has to do with some of what the whistleblowers, the UFO whistleblowers have been exposing, then you realize that either that's a gigantic disinformation false flag operation coming from the same corrupt government that's also running these secret programs like the secret space program and things like that or this is finally because it is also a time of revelation now things are coming to light that people like us as Essenes for example basically know about because we know the history of humanity and the universe and the fact that God created different beings you know Why do you think there's a mention of a goddamn serpent in the Garden of Eden? And why is there a mention of fallen angels and things and, you know, nothing to worry about? We're standing on just solid rock, yet um, a lot of things are coming to light nowadays that seem inexplainable to the average person, yet as a biblical scholar and a rabbi, I can tell you that we know basically where that could come from and and how that's explained in the holy law because there is an explanation for for this stuff in the book of Enoch uh the Kebron Agast apocryphal books there's there's it's all written yet where it becomes sort of interesting is that um these mysterious things that are coming to light now like the UFO phenomenon and all this And the whistleblowers in front of Congress, I mean, if they're freaking testifying before Congress under oath, they better not be making this up and lying because they're going to get, you know, like it looks like there's something that's really coming to light here. And the general public is not prepared to process or even um, to actually face that reality of what's really going on. Because it takes, uh, you got to have good faith because it's a serious thing. You know, think about it. According to a lot of these different theories, like the United States of America right now, there are all these different uh, locations and military bases and all this where there's supposed to be uh, tons of extraterrestrials running around. I mean, it's like in the movie Men in Black, but worse. But to think that, to, to think, that, consider this reality that's starting to be exposed by the whistleblowers, it's like you have to have strong faith. You have to be sh- strong in the faith to even consider the fact that there are these, like if what they're saying is true, and I don't think they're lying in front of Congress unless it's a false flag operation. It could be. We don't know that. But if it isn't, and it doesn't really look like it because the same information, uh, the same pattern has been exposed more and more coming from so many different people over the years in different countries. You connect the dots, make intelligence out of it, and it starts to make sense. And you see that there's a pattern of something that's definitely going on that can't be denied. Then humanity has to be ready to face this uh, reality and also uh, maintain international law and order and and like 
see, we're just getting into how the satanic agenda is sort of manifesting nowadays in the form of this strange thing they call the alien agenda, where there's all these rumors of these secret things going on, like a secret space program and things like that. Fire burn, of course, it's to be condemned. But the thing is, though, we know what's going on. We actually know that based on the Holy Scriptures, we can see that these strange reports coming from these whistleblowers nowadays are nothing new under the sun. It's as if the Holy Bible sort of explains the origins of this stuff from the beginnings. For example, the Canaanites. You know, the Canaanites were not only human. They were half, like, half Anunnaki, half human. I mean, it's written. And so that would equate that there are other beings, logically, according to the Torah even, I can prove to you that there are other beings that are half human and half Anunnaki because of what is written where Cain went to a city called Nod and he married into the goddamn Anunnaki. So that would equate that there are highly, it's highly probable that there are other beings who are like, similar to us, that are actually technologically advanced, yet genetically and spiritually inferior and degenerate, exactly the way the Canaanites are described. You know, things like that. I mean, these are realities that we're talking about here that you can find and research and prove from the holy text. This is completely rational and logical reasoning. So what I'm saying is that the, the challenges confronting humanity nowadays have gotten to be so complex that it takes a certain amount of diligent research and study to actually figure out what is going on. And it's nothing other than a satanic agenda as it's traceable and historically recorded in the, in the Holy Scriptures from ancient times, and that is manifesting in these times as an alien agenda or whatever it is in, in that category that they sort of classify under that name. You can find this out and figure it out, and we have the victory because of knowing pretty much everything there is to know about ourselves, the universe, our origins, and our divine destiny, and within the trod and uh, follow our boss, Yeshua the Messiah, you know, 